So in the year 2004, the Women's Manifesto for Ghana document made the passage of an affirmative action law a class A priority demand. In 2004, the framers of the Women's Manifesto considered the adoption of the deliberative mechanism by the state and other political actors a necessity to address the nature and magnitude of inequalities in Ghana, particularly the low representation of marginalized groups, especially women, in national processes for sustainable development. 20 years on, this is 2024, there is a huge sigh of relief nationwide that parliament has passed the law and the president of the republic nanado dankwa kufuado has given the law his accent it is a testimony that all the efforts energies and sacrifices of the optimists and visionaries in all sectors of the society who believed in this endeavor have not been in vain. We celebrate you all. <laughs> Any doubt, we as women's rights organizations would have wished that it had come much earlier. As we watch countries such as Rwanda, Uganda, Gambia, Liberia, Kenya, South Africa, Guinea, Mozambique, Senegal, and others passing affirmative action laws resulting in marked improvement in women's integration and corresponding positive impact in social justice. However, we see the passage of this law by Ghana now as a welcome act of resolve to pushing the boundaries of commitment towards gender equality and opening wide a window of opportunities for marginalized groups, especially we, the women. The Women's Manifesto Coalition believes that the Affirmative Action Equity Act 2024 represents a new beginning with prospects for the promotion of greater social justice for both women and men. Let us mobilize and strengthen ourselves by continuing to stay in focus and committed so that we can continue to oversee the full and effective implementation of this critical law. I know that we have somehow missed the boat for 2024 elections because many of the women who stood for candidacy for the elections are no longer there. But at the same time, we are expecting that nominations, as have been mentioned here, will reflect on the passage of this bill and that women for the first time will benefit from nominations because women have not benefited from elections and they have not benefited from nominations. So we are expecting that those who are going to rule us, they will reflect on the passage of this bill and that we will see nominations hitting the 30% requirement. I thank you all. Targeting the fair schedule for both public and private sectors to achieve is, which is linked to section one, is in the fair schedule. So the act is to provide for gender equity through the progressive achievement of gender balance in the public and private sectors according to set targets in the fair schedule. So from 2024 to 2026, we are looking at a minimum percent of 30% of women represented across all sectors. Then from 2027 to 2028, the percentage is to increase to 35 
percent. In the original draft, it was 40 percent, but they said it should be 35 percent. And then from 2029 to 2030, in tandem with the Sustainable Development Goals, particularly Goal 5, their aim is to reach 50 percent across all sectors. So despite the renaming of the of the of the of the laws, um, affirmative action gender equity act, the end goal remains the same, which is to achieve equality by the year 2030, which is the target set in the SDGs passed by the UN. Again, the law also establishes a multi-sectorial gender equity committee. You know, originally it was gender equality committee, now G gender equity committee to oversee the act implementation at the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection. This is in section four. So this body is made up of institutional representation, local government, attorney general's office, quite a long list. The minister also has a right to appoint a gender um, expert. There will be um, P, uh, what do they call them? Um, policy and implementation people, etc., etc. And so they will see to the implementation of the act. And it will be, the chairperson will be the minister of gender or whoever the minister appoints. And they have a lot of responsibilities. One of the key ones, as I said, is to come up with a plan of action. Before you can measure to see how people are progressively um, changing things to in line with their targets, you need to know what the baseline is at the commencement. So they are supposed to have a baseline study to see where the various sectors are, you know, so the, 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 the three arms of government, executive, judiciary, and um, legislature, as well as the, the institutions under them, the public sector, and the private sector also comes in. So they'll do the study, come up with a plan of action to see how things will be. Communication plan, which I have to say, the technical committee helped to draft already. They are also supposed to take charge of sensitization. I'm sure they'll get some of the other institutions responsible, etc. Then an organization qualifies, you know, when they come measuring, so you'll be required to submit your annual gender equity report to the committee. They will do the investigations and monitoring, and then you'll see that you receive the certificate if you have um, complied. If not, you will not receive the certificate. Then with the public sector, a whole section, a number of sections covers is government is required to ensure appropriate representation of women in governance and decision-making positions, particularly in the public service and ministerial positions, as well as all others, um, in line with the strategies that are mentioned. So, in sectors where the, the appointments are below the target, currently, I think ministerial positions, if you take the, the constitution, you, now the act has been passed. <laughs> it is just the beginning mm -hmm. of the journey. Because you go to a lot of international workshops, programs, and so on, and Ghana is very good at writing. We have wonderful policies. And when we read them, people are willing to look at it, some copy from us, and then they overtake us. Because when it comes to implementation, and then we start the Ababa say, but today, that will not happen to this act. Because quickly we'll be looking at what LI, dates, and so on. And as I said some time back, we have again, as the technical group, worked on some implementation uh, modalities, looking at even uh, communication strategy and so on. We'll be going back to all those documents to pick on them to help with the ally so that it will quickly also go through for us to know what we are doing and so on. And in the current, the act that has been passed, I've seen deadlines. We have deadlines there. <laughs> the first one that uh, hits me is the first deadline. Uh, um, 2025, we have 30 coming, 26, and we have 30 close after that, 2026. And the elections are 80 something days from now. 60 something. Hmm. So, I woke up early this morning and I was thinking, how are we going to push so that something will happen between now and 2026, looking at the figures and numbers that are coming up, especially when it comes to women's representation in parliament. We may not hit what we want, 
But what about the other sectors when it comes to appointments and so on? How are we going to push to ensure that a lot of women, women who are very able, capable, are there to speak our issues? And I say we are there. So we'll make sure that when they look for us, they will get us and we will do what it takes. So it is a challenge I'm throwing to all of us. How we will ensure that even if in parliament we don't get the numbers we want in other sectors, when they are pushing, we'll be there. I will say that a few days ago, I heard a women's man react. And then we listened to all the coalitions that have been behind us. And then we come to a point where we strategize further. Ladies and gentlemen, on this note, of the adoption of the Beijing Platform for Action, which was considered the most progressive blueprint ever for advancing women's rights. And 13 years of intensive advocacy by women's rights organizations and the broader CSO community for an affirmative action legislation in the country. Ghana finally has an Affirmative Action Act 2024, Gender Equity. I had them, so I had to remind myself that it's gender equity. The act was passed, as uh, the chair mentioned, uh, passed by parliament in July 2024, and our president gave his assent in September 2024. And for us, this is a landmark victory for the women's movement and a major milestone in Ghana's efforts towards advancing women's rights and gender equality in the country. NetRight Net acknowledges the efforts by all the gender ministers, so through more work to the gender ministry. That played significant roles in ensuring that the affirmative action legislation becomes a reality. But it's also important to recognize the efforts by the current gender minister. Uh, the current gender minister, minister for gender, children, and social protection, who made the passage of the act a priority and worked with the women's movement led by the AABO coalition to achieve this land victory. I think it's important that we recognize the role that she played. And the chair mentioned some roles that other women within the movement has played. And I also want to mention Mrs. Lisbeth Apalu for the role that she has played in ensuring that we have an affirmative action law. I also remember Professor George Chikata for writing, doing a publication on the reasons why uh, we need an affirmative action. So now the work begins. The act has been passed. We are good, the chair mentioned it, we are good at passing legislation and all that. But when it comes to implementation, that's where the challenge comes. So for NetRight, we see that the work now begins. So as NetRight, we commit to working with the government through the gender ministry and all relevant stakeholders to ensure that the act achieves its intended purpose of alleviating underrepresentation and promoting gender equality and women's empowerment by addressing the systemic barriers that have hindered women in the Ghanaian society. So come January 2025, when the appointments of ministers and then appointments on board come, the women's movement will have an eagle eye to see that we see at least 30% of women's representation in the appointment. Are you equal to all women and all who have tirelessly contributed to this journey? Thank you. <laughs>